I'm Christine Bertal. I am the Director of Performing Arts at the Sun Valley Center for the Arts, and I also am essentially the guest curator of this exhibition called Under the Influence of Rock and Roll. This show started really inspired by what you can see behind me, which is a whole selection of contemporary show posters, which are posters essentially that advertise rock and roll shows. And I saw a selection of these at an exhibition in Seattle, Washington at Bumbershoot Music and Arts Festival and thought, this is incredible. This is something that our community should see and this is something that ties so well with what our community loves and it's visual art that ties to performing arts, which is what is my true love and what I do for the center sort of on a daily basis. One of the things that was fascinating as we put together the exhibition was how deep the connections are to the world of rock and roll in this community here in the Wood River Valley. Edie Baskin is a photographer who is based in Los Angeles but has been spending time in Sun Valley for many years. She was the original photographer for Saturday Night Live, starting with the show's very first episode. And we have on display 24 photographs she took over the course of 25 years of Saturday Night Live's musical guests. Also part of this exhibition are a selection of posters from Hat Showprint. Hat Showprint is a historic letterpress studio that's based in Nashville, Tennessee. They've been there since 1879. Dick Dahlgren lives here in Ketchum, and in, during the 1960s, he was working as a graphic designer in Southern California. He was hired by Kaleidoscope Productions, which put on psychedelic rock shows in Los Angeles and San Francisco in the 1960s to design posters to advertise their shows. We have a number of his posters on display as part of the exhibition, and they really they do a wonderful job of conveying the psychedelic feel of the music that they advertised. Ethan Russell is the only photographer who shot covers for The Beatles, The Rolling Stones, and The Who. So he's really one of the key photographers from the 60s. Andy Kent is a local photographer who um, worked in the world of rock and roll for a, quite a number of years, initially photographing concerts and eventually going on tour with acts ranging from David Bowie to Black Sabbath. So he had this incredible life touring with ma the major rock acts of the time and was able as part of the tour to get some of the most intimate photographs of rock stars that were ever made. Also included in the show is a large scale piece by James Mollison. James Mollison has gone to a whole different variety of types of music shows and shot fans and essentially shot portraits. So he's taking, rather than looking at the artist, he's looking sort of at the reflection of the artist and the fans that you see on the wall are Rolling Stone fans. It's pretty clear about that based on the way that they're dressed. But it's really a fun way to look at what influence artists and photographers and art has had on the fans themselves. Carole King, who's among the best known and most prolific singer-songwriters of the 1960s and 70s and up to the present, and we were able to borrow the most wonderful photographs that were made of her in 1959 at RCA Studio in New York City during her first recording session when she was just 17, as well as a contemporary photograph, a portrait of her by another local photographer, Elissa Klein. We also have four pictures done by Henry Hargraves. These are really interesting portraits that are done essentially in the style of a Dutch still life. And they are photos that are inspired by the artist writers. Artists send a production company or whoever's putting on a concert, a writer with their requests for what happens backstage and what foods that happen backstage. And these are also sort of in the mythology of rock and roll. And on these photographs is handwritten the specifics of what each artist wants. And they're really fun to look at and see how they're laid out. They're really beautiful photographs. One of the things we wanted to show in the exhibition is the influence rock and roll has had on contemporary art. So we also have sculptures by an artist named Scott Fife who lives in Seattle, who makes incredibly realistic portraits of cultural and historical icons using archival cardboard. Um, and we, in this show, we have a portrait of Elvis, a portrait of Kurt Cobain, and a portrait of Janis Joplin. We have 12 paintings on display by an artist named Gideon Bach, who's based in Maine and Massachusetts. And Gideon's also a musician, in addition to being a painter. And he's incorporated his love of music into his painting 
in a number of ways, and one of them is by making paintings that he calls still life paintings of album covers. So he'll listen to the record while he makes the painting. When doing a show about rock and roll, it was inevitable and unavoidable. We had to include music in some way, shape, or form. We've chosen to do that in a couple of ways, and one is that we borrowed a huge array of records from two local collectors, and we have turntables that people can interact with. They can take the records out, look at them, play them on record players. And then we also invited um, a number of different local artists and friends of the center to create playlists of their favorite songs, and they've created their own playlists. One of the playlists is what music you couldn't live without on a desert island. One is those songs that were about peace, love, and freedom in the 60s. As many of you know, we have a great relationship with the Blaine County School District, and we will see thousands of students here in the gallery this year alone. But at times, there are opportunities for us to go deeper into a project, and because of the nature of the Sage School, we approached them last spring to participate in a collaboration with us for the exhibition Under the Influence of Rock and Roll. And the product of that collaboration is our 1960s timeline, which is here behind me, that the students created for us. We hope everybody will come in and see the exhibition. It's really interactive and you can come listen to music, but you can also um, participate in other ways and tell your own rock and roll story as part of the exhibition.